Hey guys, Andrew here, CMP Attachments. Today we are gonna do another how-to video. Today is on the zero turn dethatcher. We're gonna do a little video of putting it together and also installing it on the mower. So let's see what we got here. Here we have our mounting bar. This is what's gonna go on the mower itself. Our bolt kit, handle assembly, these are all of our tines, tine bars. wheel assembly, our second wheel assembly. This is our mainframe. And our time bar holder. And then we have our extension tubes. All right, the first step is to put our tines on the tine bar. The one thing I would like to point out is these tine bars are drilled offset. If I spin this one around, you'll see all the holes line up. We don't want that because we want the tines to be staggered. So if you flip one of the bars 180 degrees, now the tines will be staggered. And this is very important when you put the tines on because we need the tines go in the right direction. I just put uh, a piece of threaded rod or a bolt or whatever you might have laying around just to make life a little easier in the vise. And now that tine bar will hang there. So we will grab our box of tines. There's 24 of them in here. If you ordered a 50 inch dethatcher, you will be having four extra. So we'll slide all our tines on the same direction. We have our little bolt kit here. This is all the hardware we need to put the tines onto the tine bar. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this laid out. All right, so now each tine will get bolted on. The fender washer is gonna be on top a flat washer and a nut on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get all the bolts started. Now we're gonna go ahead and tighten these up. If you look on this side right here, on the end of this tine bar, we wanna move this tine over because there's, there's a square tube that fits in here. So if we have it over like that, it's covering half the hole. So we wanna just make sure that we're clear of that hole when we tighten these ones up. All right, so now that we got this one done, this one I started with the long side closest to the vise, so we need to make a mirror image of this. So that next one, we're gonna start with the short side closest to the vise. And now when we slide our tines on, we wanna make sure we slide them on the same orientation as we did the first tine bar. Not like this, the first one we did like this, so we're gonna do it the same way.
although you may not have a vise to get it up to nice working height like this, there's nothing wrong with cutting the box open, using that as a workstation on your garage floor. Now when we go ahead and put these tines together, if we line up the ends, now we can see we have maximum coverage. None of the tines are overlapping one another. That is the main purpose for those tine bars being flipped 180 degrees. All right, now we're on to the wheel assemblies to put those into the main frame. In your hardware kit, you'll have four of these shaft lock collars. So we're gonna go ahead and slide one on first. And then we will slide it in and slide the second one on. I'm just gonna snug these up for now. We're gonna have to adjust these once we get it on the mower, uh, more or less just trying not to have the wheels fall off. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put our extension tubes on. These, the holes are offset. So they can go this way or this way. It's gonna give you some height adjustment. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install our extension tubes onto the mainframe. If you notice, this hole is located off of the center line. For most mowers, this hole is gonna be up, but it can be orientated down giving your mounting bars more of an angle. We wanna try and keep this as flat as possible when we mount it on the mower. So for this instance, we're gonna go ahead and mount it like this. We got our 3 8 bolt and a flat washer. And then on the other side, a flat washer and a nut. And then same thing in our adjustable hole. And now we're gonna go ahead and install the second one on same orientation as the first. Once we get these on, we'll go ahead and leave them loose uh, because these will be adjusted when we install the actual dethatcher onto the mower. Okay, one thing I wanted to bring up is that these bolts are loose. They come loose from CMP, and let me show you why. This extension tube is actually adjustable. You see how there's multiple different holes here? So this tube can be in three different positions. Uh, when we go install that on the mower, we'll go over that a little more in depth, but we wanna keep this as close to the mower as possible. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and install the mainframe onto our tine bar holder with the CMP sticker facing forwards. Now we wanna get this mainframe centered onto the tine bar holder, and I just go ahead and look the edges here versus our small tubes. And we'll give her a little tap to the side, and then we'll just tap it in. Now we are gonna go ahead and grab our quarter inch bolts. I always put this top one in first because then we'll go ahead and knock it back down against that. And now we can grab our three lower bolts and get those put in there. and using our 7 16 socket wrench, we can go ahead and snug those up. So I went ahead and flipped the whole assembly upside down. We'll grab our long 3 8 bolts and get our tines put on there. Now when we install this tine bar, this 
dethatcher is going to be coming this direction. So we want to make sure that we have the tines so that they fold backwards. And what happens is when that tine folds backwards, it's actually locking the tine into the seat on the bolt. And then we have our flange lock nuts to secure them in place. All right, now we're gonna finish up by installing the four plugs to go on the mounting bar and to go on the time bar holder and they just, press in from the end. Using our 916s, we'll go ahead and get these snugged up. All right, so now we gotta go ahead and attach our lift points to the main frame of the dethatcher. And this can really go anywhere, it's kind of up to you. All right, so now we're gonna go over mounting the mounting bar onto the mower. There is several ways to do this. This is why it's called a universal dethatcher. But I think we're gonna choose to mount it on here. You could mount it on top and clamp like this with the U-bolts provided, but we're gonna choose to use the round ones and clamp like that. Um, other options for this particular mower would be, you can actually go ahead and cut this down, guys. Do what you need to do with it. This is a universal bar. We could cut it down, drill it into the mower, and just bolt it straight on to the main frame up here. But we'll go over the U bolting it on to the spindles. So, to make our life a little bit easier, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little piece of tape, stick it to my mower there, and on this mounting bar, I'm also gonna stick a little piece of tape to it. And the reason for this is I can grab a pen and a tape measure and I can mark a center line on it. So then we just have to line up our two center lines and it'll make our life a little bit easier when we're trying to hold it up there. So we got our two center lines, and then we're gonna, I just got some clamps here, and we'll clamp her on. We're gonna clamp this onto the spindle like this, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and mark out where my U-bolts have to go. So now I got my marks there. So now we're just gonna go ahead and mark center and mark center that one. Come over here and do the same thing. Mark center and mark center. All right, now we can go ahead and get our actual hole placement marked. So I'm gonna take a square and just make my lines a little more clear so that we can see them. And I'm gonna choose to drill this at the top of the bar. So I'm just gonna make my mark there and there. And we'll do the same thing on this side. So 
So now we'll go ahead and center punch our holes. And then we'll go ahead and get these bad boys drilled. Clamp this down so it doesn't spin on me. And now I got a 3 16 bit in there. I'm gonna go ahead and do a pilot hole. If you got a drill press, feel free to use it. But when we drill these holes, we wanna make sure our drill is straight up and down. We don't wanna be drilling the hole like this or like that, because if you drill it crooked when you go in, that U-bolt is gonna be extremely hard to get on there. We are gonna go ahead and bump that up. I'm gonna go one size above 3 eighths, which is 25 64 It's a 3 eighths bolt, so this will just give us a little bit of forgiveness. All right, now that we got our holes drilled, I'm gonna take and flip it around. And I just grabbed a half inch bit and I'm just gonna lightly hit them to take the burrs off. And now we can go ahead and slide our U-bolts in there. And now if we did a good job, it'll fall right on there. Like so. And we can put our nuts on there. And we'll grab our 9 sixteenths, tighten them up. There we go. Now our mounting bar is fastened to the mower. Now one thing that is very important when you install this is you want to make sure your wheels do not come in contact with the, the tying bar when you turn. So right now I got the wheel facing, so I backed up a little bit so the main part of the wheel is forward at a little bit of an angle. So I wanna make sure I got a couple inches between there. So when I slide this forward, I do not need to lengthen these extension tubes that we talked about um, earlier in the video. If the mower required the dethatcher to be further out like this to clear the wheels, then we could go ahead and lengthen those tubes out. But we're gonna go ahead and leave this one just the way it is. And I'm gonna run these in the lowest hole um, to keep this arm as straight as possible. So we can go ahead and pin it on to the mower with the provided pins. So now we're gonna go ahead and set the level for our dethatcher. And this is important because this is basically the performance um, of this dethatcher. So we wanna set our tines flat on the floor and we wanna make sure that the dethatcher is level. Um, we don't want it like this or the other way. We want it sitting flat. So now we're gonna go ahead and adjust our wheels and I'm just gonna pick these up just a little bit to take a little weight off and apply it to the wheel. We'll tighten down this collar. And that one, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just leave a little bit 
about an eighth inch gap there, just so that that wheel isn't locked up on there. We'll do the same thing with the other side. Leave our eighth inch gap. Now that we got everything where we want it, we had left all of these bolts loose to change our angle. So we can go ahead and tighten these up and tighten up our extension tubes. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and put together our handle assembly. So, first we have our full threaded bolt. Slide on a fender washer, slide on the rubber grommet, and this is gonna go through the handle, another rubber, another flat washer. This is the regular hex nut. So we're gonna run that a little bit loose and you'll see, you'll see why here. And then a flat washer on that. Now this one is actually gonna be our stop for the handle. So we can go ahead and run this guy all the way down and then put a flat washer on him. Now this handle is designed to be used in a variety of different positions. Um, for this application, we're gonna start with it straight up and down like this, um, but it can, it can go multiple different ways to fit your needs for your mower. But we're gonna go ahead and start with this one straight up and down. So we're gonna put our stop in there. Like so. And then the handle is going to go through that singular hole. Like so. Now that we got our handle assembly finished up, let's figure out where we want to mount it on the mower. Now this, this handle can really go anywhere you want. The main thing is to keep it as far forward as you can and keep it out of your way. Um, it is a universal mount handle, so you might have to come up with some ingenuity yourself to get the thing to work. I think I'm going to put this one here, and we will tip it forward, but with it tipped forward, I can still get at my deck height pal. So we're going to go ahead and mount this thing here. Right, so we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to use a permanent marker. I'm going to set this handle in place. and. Put a couple little dots for my holes. And these holes are slotted, so there is a bit of adjustment inside of that. But we, what we want to do is also make sure that we center it on this beam so that we can put our plate underneath it to brace it. All right, now we're going to go ahead and get our holes drilled in the mower. We're going to do it just like we did the mounting bar. I'm going to start with a 3 16 and then we'll jump up from there. Then we're going to jump up to our 2564 again, one side over three eighths. We're going to be using 
the shorter 3 8 bolts for this one. On this particular mower, I'm not going to use the backer plate provided because this mower, this mainframe, is double material thickness. Um, if I was going to mount it right here on the floorboard, then I would use the backer underneath it. So now that we got our handle mounted, we got the hook in the back, and then this is where our carabiner hooks to, so we've got to make sure that's in the front. But our handle, the reason we left that slop there, so that handle can come around to get in our notch, okay? So now we're gonna go ahead and adjust up some of this so it's a little more ergonomic. Um, coming back here is probably a little bit too much. So we're gonna just go ahead and roll that forward a little bit. Tighten up this guy first. And we'll try this one about here. So now we can get our carabiner. All right, so now we got our handle assembly all set up and I'll, I'll show you how we did that. Um, but we got our spring and I have it hooked on the second chain link. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it's hooked on the eighth. So now we wanna go ahead and crimp this spring so that it doesn't fall off. And why that's important, if you're traveling forward and this spring falls off, where's it gonna go? Right through your mower deck. So we wanna make sure we get a good crimp on that so that does not happen. So now if you check out my crimps, there's no way that chain can come off of either end. I have mine set up where I want, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut off this excess because this is unnecessary. If you don't have means to cut it off, there's no reason why it can't be zip tied up. But I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off because I don't want it banging around. I'm gonna leave myself a couple extra links in case I need further future adjustments, but I already have mine set up. All right, now let's go through the operation of the handle. I have this stop set up so that I can still reach it when I need to. I can grab a hold of it and you want as much motion as you can because we want to make sure that we get this dethatcher up in the air like this. I don't want you to have the stowed position right here because that's where it's at its heaviest point. We want to get it up as high as practical and you can see how my spring is acting as suspension for when I'm bouncing across the yard. If you don't have that suspension, it's going to wear on the handle much harder. When the dethatcher is in the down position, I have slop in the chain so that the dethatcher can float over uneven ground going up and down hills. When I pull it up, we utilize that slop and lock it in place. One last maintenance tip is to make sure we grease up these wheels. Like I always say, if you take care of your equipment, it's gonna take care of you. So we'll get grease shoved in there and we'll be ready to go. That's all I got for you guys. Thank you for choosing CMP Attachments, a quality made in USA product. Happy dethatching.